Just like anything else that we're new to, photography has quite a few fears that we have to overcome to become a good photographer. And let's figure out what those are. Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, 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 click and a picket. Click, click, click. So I can remember my first camera fears just like it was yesterday. I bought this new DSLR and I remembered I paid around $900 and I thought, oh my gosh, $900? What have I done? I've spent all this money on a camera. Am I going to use it? Right? So all these things are running through my head and then I get it home and I don't really know the camera. There's so many buttons and settings. I'm just kind of overwhelmed. And then to couple that up with where I was living and where I still am living, I'm living in the Philippines and not a lot of people have money here. So my fears are, oh my gosh, if I'm out on the street, are people going to run up, bump me off and take my camera and run? And so I was afraid to take that camera out. I would just like, maybe go a couple blocks from my house and go back home. I was really nervous that I was going to lose that camera uh, until my neighbor who coaxed me out to start doing walks, Robert, Robert's like, hey, Vern, let's go for a walk. And Robert started bringing his camera. And I thought, if Robert can bring his camera, then Vern can bring his camera. And that really got me out taking photos. Um, and so if you're nervous and you're in a new area, Find a buddy to go walk with, then bring your camera, take your camera out. But the thing is, is you've got to get out. You've got to start using your camera. You can't just leave it at home and expect that it's going to take shots for you. It's just not going to work that way. So the way to overcome that fear is to get out. So that is how I got past fear number one. And now I use my camera every day. So, so let's go over a couple scenarios that people might have if they are having photography fears. And one of the fears would be uh, maybe you have to do a school portrait uh, for a project. And so you're afraid you don't know what to set your camera settings at. And that one's kind of easy. So for portraiture, we want to use the lowest f-stop number. That's typically accepted. So you want to blow the background out. So if your lens goes down to 3.5, is an f-stop, use f3.5. If it goes lower, that's even better but always use the lowest f-stop and preferably shoot that in aperture priority. Then the only thing you have to be concerned about is your background and your lighting and the camera will do the rest, okay? So shoot that portrait, aperture priority, set it to the lowest aperture and then start taking your shots, okay? So that should get you to your home base for a good portrait. Now this one comes up quite a bit and people have asked me this uh, and I've heard other people getting asked this. Um, you'll have a friend come up to you and say, oh, I, I, I noticed that you do photography. You, you have some nice photos. Would you be willing to shoot my wedding? And you're like, oh my God, you want me to shoot your wedding? What if, what if I screw it up? You're not going to redo your wedding for the photos again, right? So, wow, that's a big scare. There's so much responsibility on that. And maybe the people that uh, you know you don't want to ruin that you don't want to have any issues with that so what do we do you're not maybe comfortable uh, being the only person shooting so what I would do in that example is I would go down to uh, one of the local colleges and find one that has a photography class go talk to the instructor tell him what you have going on and he'll he'll understand exactly what your needs are and maybe he can pair you up with a couple of students that would love the opportunity to shoot a wedding to have that exposure. So if you have three people shooting photos, chances are you're going to get enough photos to make it worthwhile. And it's kind of hard to, to screw that up, right? And also, those students would probably do it for almost next to no money just for the experience to do the shoot. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. You get the help, they get the exposure, and they get the experience. So that's what I would do. I would try to go to the school and find yourself some help. That way you're not the only person shooting. And the teacher would probably pair you up with students that have fairly good gear. All right, so hopefully that helps for that. Okay, in this next one, this was kind of my own fear too. So I want to shoot street photography, but I'm afraid people are going to stare at me. 
Well, anytime you have a camera, there is that fear. People are going to want to know what you're doing, right? They're going to be like, what's he shooting? Is he shooting me? Oh, oh boy, what's going on here? And so one of the biggest ways I've been able to diffuse that is if I see people that I want to shoot and they're walking towards me, what I'll do is I'll focus up at those people and I'll wait till they've walked past me <laughs> and then I'll put my camera down. So they'll think, well, he obviously wasn't shooting at us because he would have put his camera down earlier. And so for 98% of the shots, that's what I do. But in the rare event where I put the camera down and the people give me a weird look, I'll tip my camera up and I'll give them a smile. And I'm telling you, like 85% of the time, people will smile after that. If you look at my shots, right when I put the camera, just before I put it down, you'll look at the people that are giving me just kind of a weird look. And then the next shot, I take it of them smiling. And so you can tell that it was a good experience. But most people don't have that experience until they, they go through those motions. Most people don't hate that you're taking their photo. I think they hate that they don't know what your intentions are. Is he a creeper? Is he a weirdo? But if you throw them a smile, they know you're just a human being. And it's even easier if you're in a foreign land and they can view you as a tourist. So if you can come across as a tourist type looking person and not somebody that lives there, it's even 85 to 90% easier to pull it off. Now, I believe that we have a responsibility as photographers to save the now for the future. I grew up reading National Geographic. I grew up going to the library, looking at the old photos. Somebody took those photos. And without that, we wouldn't have a record of our past. So we have a very big responsibility to save that, you know? And no matter the social climate of the time, I think it's super important. All right, so one of the other fears is, my camera has too many options, there's too many buttons. I'm really afraid that it's overwhelming me. What do I do? Now that's a very big fear and a normal reality for most beginning photographers. These cameras are packed with so many options that we quite frankly don't intuitively know what each one does and whether we need them all. Well the truth is we probably will only use half of those options for most of our photography uh, lifetime. Most of those things are pro settings that um, have a specific uh, small fine-tuned type setting so you're not going to use a lot of those settings so don't worry about all that stuff um, the other thing is there's so much information on the internet of how to learn photography that you can step by step take it just a little bit of a time and so because I was also overwhelmed and I've also been in that situation I made my videos to basically train myself how I would have wanted to learn as I started my overwhelming experience. So I've got videos so far from the beginner all the way up through the intermediate and I've taken it step by step to get you to be able to make photos right away. And if you learn with these short videos, within no time you'll be taking photos and you should feel a lot more comfortable. And quite frankly, I'm usually open to answering some questions. So if you have some questions, just throw me a question and maybe I'll do a video on it. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody, but it's not that scary if you can take it one step at a time. All right? Okay, so the last fear that I have for today is uh, maybe your neighbor's uh, son or daughter has a sports match and they know you do photography and they would really like some photos from that game. They don't have a good camera. Uh, they just want something special to show their, their kid. Maybe it's at a final game. Uh, match for the end of the year and they're like oh gosh could you please photograph this and you're thinking I don't shoot sports what do I do how do I shoot a sports match I'm usually just shooting a few portraits here and there well that's kind of easy too because when you're shooting action the biggest goal is to freeze the action and you can put your camera into uh, shutter priority mode and what that will do is it will put all the other settings into an automatic mode and all you're worried about is the shutter speeds. And so I did a video on that if, if you want to look at it. And it will give you the parameters of uh, what different types of events to choose for a given shutter speed. Alright, so hopefully those things have helped you. 
Um, I wish I had known a lot of these things as I was learning. It probably would have been easier for me to, to learn and grow, but uh, instead I get to make these videos for you. So if I've helped you in some ways, please throw me a like, consider subscribing, and let's grow together. Thank you.